Hey everybody, before we start the show, I need to go over a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the bigger that we get on this channel, the more spammers and different uh, unscrupulous people like to drop in and do all their shenanigans. So I'm going to show you uh, what to expect and how to get rid of them as much as possible. So first of all, this is from the video from yesterday. And you're going to see a lot of different comments here. And there's going to be some kind of comment here from some person named Digital Asset News, who is not me. Uh, it says, uh, whatever they're talking about here, he's saying, hey, he's a trader. Thanks for your comment. I recommend George Wilson as a, someone that can help you. Contact him on WhatsApp. First of all, I will never do that. I do not usually recommend anybody uh, as far as like uh, a trader or whatever else. I, I don't recommend anybody. I talk about certain projects that I like. I have certain individuals that uh, I list on the show uh, from time to time, and very rarely. But this type of stuff, I will never do. Uh, so this is obviously uh, a spam or a scam. And then to to get rid of it, I mean, I go through them every day. But then what they do is they come back and they add them on uh, later to to my older shows, or they just come back and just and just spam me again. So. I, I'm going to ask you for your help because I can't do it by myself. So what I do on my screen is I just click these three dots right here and I click on report. Now your screen is probably going to look something like this. Let me pull it up. You're going to have uh, this screen look something here and it's just going to have like an uh, an up thumb, a down thumb, thumb and a reply. But if you, as you're scrolling around and you move your, your mouse, you can see these three dots. And make sure you're not on somebody who's like legit, like uh, <laughs> Moon Boy, I'm sure looks pretty legit. He says, just gonna say AVEX fast and XAP, maybe, okay. But uh, over here, you click on the three dots and then you report and you can say this is unwanted commercial content because it's not porn, it's not child abuse, it's not hate speech, it's not harassment or bullying, it's commercial spam, that's what it is. So I'm gonna report that and then thanks. And then they'll review it and so on and so forth. So again, I can't do them all. Uh, yesterday, I went through and it took me over an hour to go through all my videos. And it's just getting to be overwhelming. Also, to make sure it's not me, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is just click on the actual icon. And it'll take you to their channel. Because you can create a channel. You can create a, ch a channel called President Donald Trump. You can create a channel called whatever you want it to be and just put the logo in and that's you. So Digital Asset News, this person has no videos, no plays, no nothing. So obviously it's not me. And actually uh, it gets worse from there. I'm going to scroll up and show you something very interesting. First of all, there's Stansberry Research. If you've seen a couple of my videos lately, I've been following them. They're very great. They do a lot of uh, good research and good, great interviews actually. Uh, and this one is from, again, it's some kind of thread about, you know, contacting some trader at this number, which is stupid. So if you click on Stansberry Research, like, oh, they must be in it. You know, it's, it looks legit. Click on them and they have nothing. But if you go to their official YouTube page, they have 160,000 subscribers. They got all types of videos and content and everything else you want. So, so if you're ever in doubt, if it's me, just click on the logo. And that's the dead giveaway. And then also stuff like this, any kind of like phone numbers, just automatically, I'm just gonna do it right now, spam this guy. Usually that's this is how bots work. They have one person at the top and then underneath, it's all a bunch of spam. Oh, and also you're going to see a bunch of uh, different, uh, actually very positive comments in the in the comment section for the last video. Because I talked about the uh, website that I launched on yesterday, and it is 100% free. Uh, it's super easy to use, and uh, I'm going to give you the link in the description. And I didn't really clarify yesterday. It's danteachescrypto.com, but I'm going to put it in the, in the uh, description of every one of my videos. There's a link. It's going to look just like this. When you click on that, it's going to take you to the... Uh, website so you can sign up and again 100 percent free and i made this with the goal of a couple of things first to make it super simple second of all to make it structured and third because not many people have too much time i cut out all the fat and i made it very streamlined so if you come here you're going to learn things fast and just get in and get out so again check the description for that let's jump back so if you could help me out that'd be great all right let's get on with the show welcome to digital asset news like the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces today it's kind of a debbie downer sunday so first up canada's tax authority asks court to force crypto exchange to hand over data on all the users and this is the exact same thing that happened to the us in 2018 with coinbase so what is happening right now well the government is going to get their cut also in further heartbreaking news, crypto lender Cred files for bankruptcy 
and I've been reading different comments in this section, I can tell that some people have lost a lot of money. And we have to watch out for these things because these types of instances can happen at any time with the right, or more to the point, wrong project. And we'll end it all up with some good news as PayPal integration looms, Paxos CEO sees mass adoption for tokenized assets. And he's gonna talk about tokenizing gold, but I think he's missing the point. I think really if you tokenize real estate, that is the catalyst, and I'll explain that in a bit. But first, let's jump into today's market and see what's going on. So today, it is the 8th of November. It is Sunday and it's almost 3 p.m. Texas time, Houston, Texas time. And uh, what do we got? Well, it's not a bad day. Uh, Bitcoin's holding strong. Hasn't done a massive drop like some people predicted. It's pretty much uh, right where it should be, I think. Around 15.4, and it's up 4.6 for the day, 12% for the week. Fantastic time to be a Bitcoin holder. Also, even better so, is Ethereum up 17% for the week and 3.6 up for 24 hours. If you haven't uh, heard in the last two days, uh, Vitalik Buterin has put all the information as far as Ethereum 2.0 and how to stake your 32 ETH to become a validator. I personally will not be doing that and I talked about why, but uh, you can just check out that video a couple days ago and I'll tell you all about it. Tether is uh, 17 billion market cap, so that's great. XRP is still a quarter, so hey, pretty good. 2.2% up, not too shabby. Bitcoin Cash 5.8. Remember, they're they're going to go through their hard fork uh, coming up in November, so we'll see how that all works out. But sure, Chainlink's almost thirteen dollars. Super happy. I like Chainlink. I like the project. Uh, so hopefully it keeps going up. But it's up thirteen percent for the week. So fantastic. Binance Coin, Polkadot, uh, Litecoin, Cardano. Everything's up. Uh, what else is zinning down? Monero's up five point four. Great for all you Monero holders. Uh, Tezos four point seven. Wow. OKB 2.2, 8.3 for NEM, Whew, that's pretty good. 6.3, 6.3 for VJ, wow. And then of course Celsius is about to hit out uh, that $2 mark. Uh, Celsius has been on a tear this year. I mean, if you invested into Bitcoin or Celsius, you are way ahead with Celsius, but uh, it is what it is. It's up 35% for the week, 6.5 for 24 hours. And someone asked me yesterday, they go, hey, why can't I just dump all my money into it? Because it seems like it's going up all the time. I'm just gonna tell you, this is not my first rodeo, and what goes up will come down at some point. It cannot go up forever, and just uh, don't be surprised when it actually does happen. Hold back a little bit, because when the dip happens, and it'll happen, you'll have something on the sidelines to invest into, hopefully massively. Dash 2.7 theta, 4.1, still at 66%, I'm pretty happy about that. And then uh, Ave up 20%, wow. Ave's, uh, geez, 76 77 percent in a week i gotta really cover this a little more i always talk about this like oh i gotta find out what i never do because there's so many things going on i really am going to put that on my list of things to do uh, which will usually collect dust and i won't get to it but uh i'm always hopeful all right so that's what's going on today great day being crypto let's see what's going on as far as the bad news so first up well this sucks canada's tax authority asks court to force crypto exchange to hand over data on all its users, and you know this is happening. So, if you're in Canada, uh, well, congrats, you got a great healthcare system. I hear. I don't know. Some people say it's awesome. Some people say it's awful. Uh, I hope to. I tend to believe it sounds pretty good. That's not the point. The point is, is that Canada's tax authority is reportedly asking a federal court to force cryptocurrency exchange CoinSquare to hand over information and certain documents on all of its users since. This is crazy. Since the beginning of 2013. So my question is this. Were they not doing this before? Were they just like, nope, sorry, Revenue Service of Canada, we're not going to give you squat. And they're like, all right, A, that's fine. Seven years uh, you know, later, we'll get around to it. <laughs> Here they are. That's amazing. 2013, you could have been having uh, tax-free gains in Canada. Uh, pfft, great. I had to check out Canada more. Anyhow, so the National Post report on Friday elaborating, the Canada Revenue Agency wants to know the identity of every client of a major Canadian crypto trading platform, which is CoinSquare, as part of its effort to fight tax fraud and the underground economy, which is kind of funny, the underground economy. Well, I, I guess it is. It's, I, I will say this, at least it's not saying like all this illicit activity and this drug running and this terrorist organization. At least you're like, hey, it's an underground economy and we want our cut 
So, Charles Drowen, a spokesperson for the CRA, or Canada Revenue Agency, states this, the CRA presumes the opportunity for non-compliance to be high. So they don't know, they're just asking for documents. Like, is this really happening or not? Because we need to get our money and we don't know how many there is. So just hand it over. CoinSquare is like, nope, we're not gonna do it. The regular told Journal de Montreal last year that crypto were increasingly being used to facilitate offshore tax evasion in the 54 criminal investigations it was conducting at the time. That's interesting. I mean, you can talk to Peter Schiff about that. Allegedly, allegedly, I'm not gonna say he's doing that, but allegedly that's what his bank is doing, allegedly. Don't sue me, allegedly. In the US, the Internal Revenue Service took a similar approach, asking a court to force Coinbase to hand over customers data, and that happened on February 25th, 2018, for which Coinbase rolled over and said sure, which I'm not gonna say rolled over like, you know, they they really had a choice. Let's be honest. Uh, all here who have ever been through an audit, raise your hand. Well, I have. I'm raising my hand. You can't see me. And it sucks. It's awful. You have to put in all your different uh, receipts and documentation. You have to go back and you have to take a big chunk of time out of your life just to prove that you're not a criminal. And then you still have to pay more, which is what happened to me. Uh, you got to pay. You know, you just that's just how it is. So the government's always going to get their cut. That's just how it is. So if you're concerned about these things, I made a little video about it, how I'm going to pay 0.0% in crypto taxes legally, which is the big thing here. And if you want to watch that video right now, I'm going to put a little tag at the very top right hand corner. It's going to slide right now and you can check it out. All right. So that's it for that. Let's get to our next story. And worst news, crypto lender cred files for bankruptcy. What the heck is going on? Well, crypto lender cred has filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in Delaware on Sabado and Saturday in October. The lender published a cryptic letter saying that it has experienced irregularities in the handling of specific corporate funds by a perpetrator of fraudulent activity. Now, I don't know what that means in English. I have no idea, but it sounds to me like someone screwed up and someone ran away with the dish and the spoon and all the money. So again, different projects on this channel. I know this channel is just the news and some say, hey, you really gotta get into other projects and really talk about these, you know, these things that are outliers to make people a bunch of money. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. Because I don't understand why people are like, let's get rich today. Like it, it doesn't work like that. It never works like that. It, it takes effort and time and, and when you have these projects, you have to really do a lot of, of deep diving into it. Look at the background. Look at the people behind it. Look at the, the infrastructure. And, and I, and I got to tell you, like, uh, there's a reason why I only talk about certain things in this channel because I don't trust anything else. I just don't. So uh, this is a prime example. And if you've lost money, I, I've, I've read the comments in the comment section. It's pretty bad. I'm really sorry for everybody that did. But this is what it is. So in March, several crypto lenders struggled to weather the uh, Bitcoin crash with some making margin calls of a hundred million or more. If you don't remember, this is in March when COVID-19 really came about and it was like the the worst day for crypto. I mean, I think Bitcoin went below 4,000. I think it was like around 34, 38, somewhere around there. And uh, all these different lending companies were like calling it in like, hey, it dropped so much, your collateral isn't worth squat. So you either gotta, we're either gonna liquidate you right now or you gotta put more money in. And a lot of them got liquidated. Celsius, just as a note, and you can check with Alex Bashinsky over on his Twitter account, even on, on the website, they liquidated a grand total of, I think it was between like three and four people total out of all the different loans that they made. And people actually either either paid up or they made provisions or whatever they did. But uh, yeah, they gave people the options and it worked out. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I am with Celsius. Because when you have hardship, when you see like uh, the worst crucible to really come down and they weather the storm, that's what a test of a company is. And that's why I put faith in, in only certain people and institutions. And lastly, it just says Cred CEO. His name's Dan Shat. No kidding. No way. That's not made up. It's funny. Did not immediately respond to requests for comment. I mean, I highlighted this before the video, but I didn't see his name. Dan Shad. Who's going to crush that name? Anyhow, allegedly. Allegedly. No, really, that's not allegedly. He's in Chapter 11. All right, so let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Dan Shat. All right, as PayPal integration looms, Paxos CEO sees mass adoption for tokenized assets. So what's going on here? In a panel last week for the London Bullion Market Association, Paxos founder and CEO 
Charles Cascaria, that's a great name, discussed the growth of Paxos gold-backed ERC-20 token. He mentioned a variety of drawbacks that limit the utility of both physical gold and gold-backed assets exchanged on traditional markets, including limited market hours, high frictional costs inherent in exchanging physical bullion. Because of their superior liquidity, transferability, and availability in 24-hour markets, Cascaria says tokenize gold and other assets as the future. And this only makes sense. So if you're talking about gold, I mean, gold bucks say, you know what, this is a great store of value, and this is really fantastic because you can you can hedge your bet and you can uh, you know carry this around. I'm like, no, you can't. I mean, you can. You can carry gold around. But if you're like in a third world country and you're trying to escape some kind of dictator or, or, or some kind of like fascist regime, which is just crushing the, the whole uh, economy and the people in its path, do you really think you're going to get out with some gold in your pocket? Or you think you're going to get shaken down? Not by, the, maybe by the government, or maybe just by people who are, you know, just going through the same hardships you are, like, hey, give me your gold. So, I mean, the same th type of thing can be for any kind of asset. And and one of these, there was a report that we talked about, and it talked about portability. And somebody said a very smart thing. They said, if you can remember 12 words, you can carry your entire fortune in your head. Because that is your passphrase. That's your mnemonic seed phrase uh, for your ledger or for whatever else that you have that you can carry around all your different uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets. I thought... That's a perfect analogy. So in this one, portability, I think, is key. Also, if you're trading, look, there's only one desk open 24-7, 365, and it's cryptocurrency. You're not going to find that in the Dow. You're not going to find that in NASDAQ. You're not going to find the S&P 500. It just doesn't happen like that, right? So you need something that is liquid. And guess what's liquid? This, and you can do whatever you want at any time of the day. So on top of that, he says, one major barrier stands in the way, adoption, which only makes sense, right? They can only get so many people to actually adopt. To date, Paxos has tokenized 75 million in gold or 37,000 ounces, which isn't squat. It's a fraction of the estimated 7.3 trillion global gold market. He believes, however, that a 5 to 10 multiplier and assets under management to bring the total tokenized gold market above 1 billion is where the market for tokenized assets would really begin to cook with fire. And for that sector, he's right. I mean, in, in that section, he's right. Like, if we can get some kind of tokenized assets for gold or silver or whatever else you want to tokenize, as far as, like, precious metals, sure, going to do fantastic. I see it a different way. I'm not a... I own gold and a little bit of silver, and I own a lot of Bitcoin. Not like a lot of... Not like grayscale level, but I own a, you know, good amount for, for, for who I am, I would say. And when I talk about tokenizing assets, like gold is pretty cool, right? I mean, you can do that type of thing. But I think the big future here is real estate, real estate and land. Because here's an example. Let's say you go and you're like, I want to buy a condo in New York on a high rise, right? Well, it's $5 million. Well, that sucks because I can't afford $5 million. So how about if you could tokenize that condo? And then you could say, I don't know, we're going to rent that condo, right? The agreement is we're all going to rent it for X amount of dollars per month or per year or whatever it's supposed to be. So I don't know how much that rent is. I've never lived in a $5 million condo in my life, but it's a lot of money. So if you have a bunch of investors in, into that, let's say you have, I don't know, let's say 150 investors, right? And then they're all tokenized. So then every month, each one of those uh, people, however much percentage that they put in, they get money every month from that asset which is the condo same thing could be it could be for a house it could be for a skyscraper it could be for a strip mall whatever else it is but if you can just tokenize because people know they're supposed to get into real estate with like well shoot i can't get into it because i don't have that much money i got crappy credit and the bank's gonna check on me i got all these problems da, 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 da. well guess what for cryptocurrency and assets, you don't need to have a background check you just need money if you got money hey we'll take it so then you put it in you tokenize it and every month you get a little bit of the pie and uh that my friends is how you retire so that's how i see it i could be wrong let me know what you think in the comment section and uh, that's it for today it's sunday it's a good day to watch a little football at church or whatever or church football whatever you're into and uh that's all we got i would just remind you if you could do me a favor check out my website dan teaches crypto again streamlined simplified uh super fast and easy and i just try to break things down in the simplest way possible to save you time it's 100 percent free you can get started today uh, there's only five modules there's not that much information in there because i condense it to the simplest parts and let me tell you that's the hard part and breaking them down from complex to simple that's what takes the most amount of time and that's what we try to do here so again Thanks for uh, sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, two more is going to pop up. I'm going to definitely put the one about the tax uh, minimization video. You can check that out. And uh, that's all. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.